Alright everybody, welcome back to another video. So today I'm talking about my thoughts on The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 2. So, let's, uh, let's jump into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is something I forgot to talk about last time. So, I meant to talk about something that I liked with the whole uh, Tusken Raider thing and, you know, related to Cobb Vanth, I think his name is. Um, the Timothy Oliphant guy. <laughs> the uh, the kind of Western sheriff guy. So, he has this, like, drink that is offered to him from one of the Tusken Raiders in the beginning of the episode. He's like, what the heck? Like, I'm not going to drink this. This smells disgusting. And, and he's, you know, like, really racist towards the guy. They almost get into a fight. They almost kill each other. <laughs> so it's like, oh, man. And then later, when they're all working together at the like kind of near the end of the episode, not exactly the end of the episode, before they take on the dragon, he's there with the, the Tuscans and one of them just kind of casually hands him the same drink. He's like, oh yeah, he just drinks it like it's water or something. Like he's, it's just totally like normal and second nature, which I thought was a really nice way to show that he's kind of accepting the Tuscan Raiders and he's not, you know, mean towards them anymore. anymore. So I thought that was really cool. It was just a nice subtle way to show that, yeah, he is accepting these people now and he's, you know, realizing that he needs their help to kill the dragon and everything. So yeah, that was really cool. Now let's get into the second episode. So I have five things I like and five things I don't like. I really had to stretch for things I like in this episode because I did not like this episode. And also spoilers in this episode as well, or in this uh, talking. So if you have not seen this episode, then please go watch it before you watch this. So click off of this and watch the episode. So I'm assuming if you're here, then you will have seen the episode already. So First thing I liked is Baby Yoda actually did something in this episode. <laughs> so in the last one I was complaining, I'm like, hey, Baby Yoda was useless, he didn't do anything, he just stood around looking cute. And in this episode he actually did things, you know, he had the whole little storyline with the eggs, <laughs> he kept eating the eggs, and everybody's like, oh my god, what are you doing? Stop! Like my family, I was watching with them, and they were freaking out every time he ate one, they're like, no, my, what are you doing? It was, it was great. So like, that was awesome, you know, he actually did something. And it was great. And it doesn't have to be something you like, right? Like, he did something bad every time, which I thought was cool. And then the second thing that I liked was there was a really cool moment where there was a musical reference. And I actually didn't notice this the first time because I was actually laughing at the music. So let me explain. Uh, the part that I'm talking about is when the X-Wings come in. So this is a spoiler. So the X-Wings come in a second time and they save the Mandalorian. They shoot all the spiders, which apparently are like a subspecies of the ones in Rebels. I don't know how true that is, but they totally look like those, uh, the little things from Rebels. And so maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Maybe Dave Filoni's just using the same thing. Probably that's more likely what it is. So anyways, the X-Wings come in, they start shooting the... Uh, uh, you know, all the spiders, and then they leave, and the music that's playing there is like this really nice, slow reference to the March of the Resistance, which is the music that you often hear when you see X-Wings, <laughs> to put it simply, in the sequels, and so, um, it was kind of cool that they had that little musical reference, but it was funny because the music was really, like, gangstery, and I was kind of laughing at how, like, oh, Dave Filoni is in this scene and he has this, like, gangster music playing. I thought it was just really funny, so I didn't notice what the actual music sounded like. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. But yeah, that that was cool that they threw that reference in. I thought that was a nice little, you know, little nod, little attention to detail. So that was cool. So the third thing that I like is the opening to the, the episode. Although I have a slight complaint to it, but it's not about the actual opening. So I thought it was cool. You know, I loved how he tricked the guy into just killing himself with the jetpack. Like, that was really funny. And it was it was cool. And uh, it was just nice to see the Mandalorian being smart. You know, like, that's great. I'm not saying he's been dumb throughout the show. I'm just saying, like, it's nice to see our character be smart, right? So that's always good. And the thing that I don't like is that, like, are we going to have this kind of opening every single episode? Because this, this has been a pattern so far. At the beginning of every episode... There's a fight, Mandalorian beats up some guys, he wins, and then the, the episode starts. You know, it, like, it really doesn't have much consequence to the story, and it's just a thing that they do at the beginning of pretty much every episode. And, like, I don't really mind it, but it's just like, really? I don't know, like, it just feels very formulaic, which I don't like. Um, and that also leads me to another complaint. So I'm already talking about things I don't like, and I'm <laughs> not even past the things I like yet. But, anyways, the, um... The thing that I don't like is the plot. It's very, I don't know, it's very weird. Like, it's just kind of a general complaint I have. You know, the plot is, oh, we gotta go find Mandalorians. And it's like, why? <laughs> I don't understand why, and they never really say. It's just like, this is a thing that he's doing. I have to go find Mandalorians because 
they're going to help me find Baby Yoda's species. Like, it's just so obvious that they don't want to find who Baby Yoda is so that they can keep, you know, exploring that throughout the show and people don't lose interest in the show. So they're like, oh, we'll have them find Mandalorians, I guess. Like, come on, that's so obvious that you're just distracting from the main goal here. And it's just really lame. Like, give them something else to do. Like, maybe Moff Gideon is, like, constantly after him and he has to like really stay away from him or he has to find a way to take him out like that would be interesting but no it's like we got to find mandalorians okay cool i guess like why why should i care <laughs> like i don't know i i maybe i need to watch the episodes again because they might explain it better in the first one but i don't think they do so anyways on to the next point about the things i like which is the uh i like the introduction of a new species so it's always great to see new things we have this uh, weird frog lady species. So that was kind of cool, I guess. Um, like I said, I kind of stretched my, uh, <laughs> kind of stretched to find things that I like in this episode. Oh yeah, and then the last thing that I thought was kind of cool was that they used the dead droid from the sixth episode, the Suicide Squad episode in season one, so that the frog lady could communicate to Mando. So that was cool. I thought it was kind of an interesting way to use that. Uh, it didn't seem like fan service or anything because it's a fairly new thing. So that was kind of cool, just a nice, like, nod, and also, like, kind of spooked Mando a little bit, like, whoa, you're using, like, an evil dead droid to talk to me? That's kind of weird. So I liked that, it was kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I really had to, to stretch it to find things that I liked, and I'm sorry, but I just didn't find this episode appealing, so now I will talk about why that is. So, the first point that I'll make is that the mechanic woman can speak to the frog lady, and... There's two things about it that I don't like. One, it was just weird. Like, it was weird to hear her speak frog. And it was funny because it reminds me of that video of George Lucas where <laughs> he's speaking, like, um, oh, what is it? Oh, it was the Geonosian language. And he's trying to, like, tell the sound designers how it should sound. And it just sounds really goofy and funny. That's what this sounded like. It was just weird to see her speaking this odd language. And it was like, that's, I don't know, it just felt weird. And then um, it was just goofy, I guess. And the next thing that's weird about her speaking that language is, you know, there's so much emphasis put on the fact that this lady is, like, the last of her species. It's her and her husband, and she's trying to repopulate the species with all these eggs, right? And that's why you <laughs> get so mad at Baby Yoda when he eats one. It's like, oh my god, you're killing the species. Stop. <laughs> right? So why would she know that language if she's, like, the, the only one, and she just met her ten minutes ago, right? Like, she made that joke. So... Why would she know that species if it's like a rare dying, or why would she know that language if, if it's a rare dying species? Like that makes no sense at all. So the next thing that I didn't like about the episode was the whole New Republic X-Wing stuff was weird and confusing. I just didn't understand it. Like these two X-Wing guys, they, they come up and then they're like, hey, you know, give us your call sign or whatever. And then Ma the Mandalorian just doesn't. And it's like, why wouldn't you just tell them? Because they're going to shoot you down if you don't. And it was weird. Like, he he's done nothing wrong, so I don't understand why he's being so, like, sketchy. And then they're kind of portrayed as these, like, corrupt cops, which was just like, why? Why are you doing that? Like, the rebellion is supposed to be this thing that we're all, you know, we're all supposed to like, right? And, like, they're supposed to be these heroes. And seeing, to see these, you know, seeing the, the pilots as these, like, sketchy guys was weird and I didn't like it you know like I know that's probably the point but it's like that's not how it should go you know like I don't know it was just weird and and it was just very confusing the whole thing was like why w wouldn't you just you know tell him or why wouldn't you just like show the call sign like he did but it was too late and then they wanted to attack him and they're like oh you I don't know you did something wrong or something I don't even remember it was very confusing it was something to do with the prison episode and then they were like oh but it's okay because you helped capture those people but then no you're still you're still under arrest but we'll let you go like it was so dumb like it just made no sense i was like you might as well just have not had that happen and it was just really weird so that was odd and i didn't like that and then the next thing it's related to that is dave get out of your show man why why do you do this every time so dave floney was one of the x-wing pilots he had a wolf helmet on because he likes wolves and so um <laughs> whatever, that's fine. And it's just like, come on, dude, why do you always have to be in your show? And people are going to comment on this video. Well, maybe people didn't comment on the last one. So I don't know. Some people did, but nobody really watched the last one. So we'll see. But I'm sure somebody's going to bring up the point that, oh, John Favreau forced Dave Filoni to be in the episode because he wanted him to be. 
No. No, 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 no. That is not what happened at all. Dave Filoni did not get forced into being in his own show. And the reason why I know that is because he has been in countless episodes of Rebels. He's voiced so many characters. It's so annoying. He always voices like an Imperial or like, usually it's a Stormtrooper. Actually, I think he consistently played a Stormtrooper in the fourth season. And then he played like a couple different people throughout the seasons. And, and one of them was just so awkward because it was like, there was an Imperial officer who are all British. And then you just hear D Dave Filoni's American lisp. And it's just like, that. that's so weird and awkward. But anyways, and so he's been in the Rebels. You know, he's been in Rebels. He's been in the Clone Wars. He's been in his own TV shows before. He definitely wanted to be in this show. Like, that's that's obvious. It was, he was not forced into being in this. And it's just like, why do you need to be? That's my problem. It's like, why? Just, just I don't know. Why does he need to be in there? It's just weird. I don't like it. And it's it's very just like, I don't know, narcissistic maybe? I don't know. Anyways, on to the next point. So, the next point is back to the frog lady. Uh, <laughs> seeing her bounce around and stuff was just really goofy and weird. And, um, <laughs> I don't know, it was strange. Because you didn't know she was a frog until she, until she started jumping around everywhere. So it was just really weird to see her leaping around. It was like, okay, it's just really goofy to see in Star Wars, I guess. I don't know. It's not a big deal. It's just something that I noticed and I didn't really like. And then the last thing that I don't like about the episode, or my next point is who cares? <laughs> like, who cares about this episode? It was, it was just so, like, inconsequential that everything, like, nothing mattered. Why do we care about saving this species? Oh, because she knows a Mandalorian. Who cares? <laughs> Come on! Like, I don't care about this. And then, it's a to be continued, and it's just like, oh, why? I don't care. Like, I don't want to see her deliver these babies to her husband. I don't care. Like, I really just don't. It doesn't matter at all. And the fact that we're getting two episodes about this is just so lame. Like, come on. Really? It's so dumb. So this was, yeah, this was my least favorite episode of the season so far. We'll see what happens next. Maybe the next one will be my least favorite because it's the same thing. <laughs> so I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Didn't like this episode a whole lot. But these are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. And uh, please actually comment on this. <laughs> um, people didn't talk, or not very many people watched the last one. And I was going to not do this video because of that. But then I decided, no, because I want to do this. And I want to do these videos. So uh, sorry if you don't like these and if you don't like watching them. But I'm going to keep doing them because I like making them. So that's that. Anyways, that was the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.